Welcome to High School Softball on 91.7 KNEO. This is a sporting outreach of the KNEO Sports Network. Now let's go live to the game site for all the action. And a pleasant good Monday morning, and we welcome you here to the Killian Sports Complex as we get set for the Class 2 semifinals between the 24-6 Willow Springs and the 36-1 Diamond Lady Wildcats. I'm Ben Wolcott, joined by Coach Daryl Harbaugh, your studio producer back at the KNEO Studios. Look, Taylor, countdown to first pitch sponsors, GTC Broadband and Max Steel. How do these teams get to this spot? As uh, Diamond raced through the Class 2 District 6 tournament, beating Pierce City 11-0, Lamar 8-1, and a come-from-behind victory over Mount Vernon 5-3 before beating Forsyth in the state quarterfinals 11-1. Willow Springs got here by beating Gainesville 3-2, Thayer 3-1, and then it took nine innings to beat Ava 4-2, and then they beat Houston in the state quarterfinals 10-2. 24-6 to and six versus 36-1. and one. Should be a good matchup between these two teams here this morning, Daryl. And uh, as we can attest to, there are a lot of Diamond fans that have made the trek up I-44 here to Springfield. Yeah, you might as well have canceled school and the last person in Diamond <laughs> turn the lights off because it, you know, they're all here. And they'll be, if they can win, they'll be all here tomorrow too. Willow Springs, also a very decent (coughs) crowd here, but a little bit longer of a trek here for uh, Willow Springs, so not as many fans here, but uh, good uh, afternoon to softball. And, Daryl, just looking over uh, some of the stats here from earlier, this Diamond team, it's really the top three that do most of the damage for them. Caitlin Surrey, over 500 batting average. Lauren Turner, over 500 batting average. And obviously the one that starts it all, uh, you you talk about their point guard on the the basketball court. She's the catcher here, Grace Frazier, uh, a 567 batting average. So the top three really do a lot of the damage for this diamond team. Yeah, they got some other good players that just uh, hear that reader. She's hitting 467 in uh, 309 from the Jager. They're they've got some kids that can play. You don't get to here. You don't get here unless you got kids that can play. Should be a good one here between these two teams. Take a three-minute timeout. Come back with more after this on the KNEO Sports Network. A proud supporter of local high school athletics is GTC Broadband. They would like to wish all the area teams much success both in the classroom and during their athletic competitions. GTC Broadband is located at 126 South Beaver Avenue in Granby, Missouri and serve customers in the Granby and Diamond area. They offer internet and telephone service to both homes and businesses. To learn more, their website is www.gtcbroadband.net or by phone at 417-472-6211. Tally Tire is excited to support local area high school sports and cheers on all the dedicated school athletes in their endeavors. Located at the junction of Highway 59 and 86 east of Neosho, they specialize in a variety of automotive services including alignments, oil changes, engine diagnostics, and more. For more information, the phone number for Tally Tire is 417-451-0457 or online at tallytire.com. Max Steel Incorporated in Diamond, Missouri is proud to be supporting this portion of the game. They specialize in metal building supplies including residential and commercial garage doors, vinyl siding, plus windows and insulation for commercial and residential. Open Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and closed on Saturday and Sunday. Max Steel Incorporated located at 17982 Elder Road in Diamond, Missouri or online at maxsteelinc.com. 417 5300. Where will you be in four years? At Missouri Southern State University, we're here to help you achieve your life goals. Small class sizes allow you to develop a more personal relationship with your instructors and practice your skills in immersive environments. From a healthcare simulation center to crime scene investigation, state-of-the-art science labs, a mock courtroom, and much more. Study abroad opportunities can help you develop a global mindset. Learn more about our high quality educational opportunities at MSSU.edu. A nonprofit organization, a sponsor of high school sports. 
KNEO would like to thank The Big Nickel for sponsoring this portion of broadcasting on 91.7 FM. The Big Nickel is an advertising shopper for thousands of different items, from automobiles and livestock to help wanted and real estate. It covers a 70-mile radius in the four-state area and is available in area businesses each week. Located at 2918 East 20th Street in Joplin, Missouri. Their telephone number is 417-624-4100. Pump and Pantry at the intersection of Missouri 45 and Highway 59 is a proud supporter of Diamond Lady Wildcats. They're open till 11 p.m. seven days a week. They're a convenience store with a large number of breakfast options and made-from-scratch cheesecakes. For more information, the number is 417-358-1955. Pump and Pantry for all your convenience needs and go cats! The score of any athletic event is generally forgotten over time, but the actions of players, coaches, and spectators leave lasting impressions. Next time you attend a high school game, think of how history will remember you. Choose good sportsmanship and help rekindle the spirit of citizenship. Remember, the lessons you teach today will help develop better citizens in our communities for tomorrow. This message is brought to you by your friends at the Missouri State High School Activities Association and KNEO Radio. Daryl, you're 36-1. and one. You're going to be a very good softball team the lone loss is to a team out of kansas <coughs> frontenac and that frontenac team is playing in the class three state tournament in kansas so obviously that's a a good loss but 36 and one overall for this diamond team yeah absolutely i mean you you're 36 and one that means you've got a few girls that can play and uh you know you got to you got the you got the pitching, you got the hitting, you got the whole combination there. And like you said, they came back in the district final. They they won one. They they have a a game here that says they they won two to one in 17 innings. If I'm reading that correctly, it's like you got some girls that'll fight all the way down to the very end. So you're going to have a good team when they do that. Yeah, it should be a fun one uh, between these two teams as Willow Springs 24 and six diamond 36 and one diamond battle tested fast Mount Vernon three times this year Mount Vernon was ranked the number three team in the state unfortunately you're in the same district they beat them all three times they were down three to two scored three runs there in the fourth inning and was able to hold on for the victory five to three in that district's championship game well, as, as like I said, if you're down, you're not panicking. Uh, you, you know, you got the girls that can play, the girls that want to play, and uh, it's mental. Then it gets mental. It's a, it's mentally. If you're mentally tough, then you're going to go right down to the very end and do everything that you need to do and have a chance to win. That's what these girls are. Thirty-six and one. They they fight to the very end. This Diamond team also two years ago went to the state championship, won the state championship. So a lot of these players, they may not have played two years ago, but they have this experience mm-hmm. from a couple years ago, and that should help them out here today. Yeah, they know what it's like. They know what it is. They know what it's like to be here. It's like it's no big deal. Okay, we're here again. We know what to do. We know what everybody's expecting us for it to do, and the Diamond and the Diamond faithful, you see them behind us. The stands are full, packed crowd, capacity crowd, standing room only all the way down to the end. Uh, they're going to support these Ladies girls to the very end. end. Welcome to the we so will go ahead and take a two-minute so timeout so as they get the set for the National Anthem. Association. When we come back, we'll get you the starting lineups and the start of the contest. You count down to first pitch sponsors, GTC Broadband and Max Steele here on the KNEO Sports Network. Let's all do our part. Have you recently felt like your prayers went unanswered? Like God wasn't even listening? God hears all prayers and may be telling you something that you're simply not hearing. Could there be active sin in your life that he wants to address? Might he be saying no or not now to your request because he has something better? Is it possible that you're praying for your will to be done instead of his? These are all potential reasons, but the real place to start is your relationship with Jesus. We're all sinners in need of forgiveness. That should be our first prayer, seeking forgiveness of our sins and an eternal relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is where our relationship with God changes. Have you truly accepted that invitation and prayed for Jesus to be first in your life? If you want to talk about what that means and how to invite Jesus into your heart, then call us at 888-NEED-HIM, or you can go online and chat with us at chataboutjesus.com. 
Web Chiropractic at 101 South Washington in Diamond, Missouri is proud to support the Diamond Wildcats, offering a variety of chiropractic services as well as DOT physicals, laser therapy, and more. For a complete listing of the services they offer, the website is webchiro.com. Web Chiropractic at 101 South Washington Street in Diamond, 417-325-6334 or facebook.com slash webchiropracticpc. Go Wildcats! Where will you be in four years? At Missouri Southern State University, we're here to help you achieve your life goals. Small class sizes allow you to develop a more personal relationship with your instructors and practice your skills in immersive environments. From a healthcare simulation center to crime scene investigation, state-of-the-art science labs, a mock courtroom, and much more. Study abroad opportunities can help you develop a global mindset. Learn more about our high-quality educational opportunities at mssu.edu. A nonprofit organization, a sponsor of high school sports. And we welcome you back. Your starting lineups here, sponsored by Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. First for the Willow Springs. Lady Bears, who come in at 24 and 6 overall. Leading off is the shortstop, number 3, Chloe Jones. Batting second and playing second base, number 18, Kyla Smith. Batting third and playing first base, number 21, Madeline Fair. The cleanup hitter is the third baseman, number 20, Emma Roberts. Batting fifth and playing center field, number 7, Alicia Shanks. Batting sixth and doing the pitching, number 13, Emma Spence. Batting seventh and playing right field, number 11, Kaylee Pendergrass. Batting eighth and playing, doing the catching, number 25, Sophia Jackson. And batting ninth is the designated player, number six, Madison Bay. Their extra player is number nine, Karis Cochran. She will be out in left field. Now the starting lineup for the Diamond Lady Wildcats who come in at 36 and one overall. Leading off is the catcher, number 10, Grace Frazier. Batting second and playing center field, number six, Caitlin Surrey. Batting third and playing shortstop, number eight, Lauren Turner. The cleanup hitter is the pitcher, number 21, Taylin Reader. Batting fifth and playing second base, number 12, Aubrey Ball. Batting sixth and playing third base, number 25, Marissa DeJager. Batting seventh and playing right field, number 34, Sarah Roselle. Batting eighth and playing first base, number 24, Talon Daniels. And batting ninth and playing left field, number 13, Cabri Harmley. Should be a good one here between these two teams. As Diamond is the number home nine, team here this afternoon, I guess it's this morning still, number as Cheyenne they will be in the all blacks with gold trim number and numbers, 15, Willow Springs the all whites with number red 18, trim and numbers here number this morning Katie as we're at the top of the 11 o'clock hour, you're listening 15, to KNEO 91.7 FM, Yosho Joplin live Katie online at KNEO.org. Daryl, like you said, a very big contingent that made the trip up I-44 from Diamond. And one of those where if you were the last one leaving Diamond, uh, turn the lights off. (laughs) Turn the lights off. Uh, You know, just try to leave the blinking light working in the middle of the middle of the town because everybody's up here everybody's have you know rooting on these girls they played good i just looked at them i think they've got three seniors on the team number 25 marissa no they just got two seniors on this team this is a young team still yet uh the two seniors are big ones but they're still a good young team here and they've got a big crowd following and, and diamond has always been notorious has always been good at following their teams up uh, for years they never had football now they're playing football now they're playing back you know boys basketball was huge girls basketball is huge as it is now in the softball team diamond has been the city of diamond has done a great job following their those teams out for their school should be a good one here this afternoon i guess it's starting in the morning i mean i have to get used to saying this morning into this afternoon as well it's afternoon somewhere <laughs> diamond like we said will look like this in the field cabri parmley and left caitlin surrey in center and sarah roselle in right field left to right in the infield you have marissa de jager at third lauren turner at short aubrey ball at second talon daniels at first with a battery of grace fraser catching talon reader don't be surprised if Caitlin Surrey comes in at some point from center field to pitch as well. 
Sir Reeder got the start against Mount Vernon a couple weeks ago. Surrey came in and got the win in that one. So don't be surprised if Surrey gets some pitching here this morning as well. Chloe Jones will lead it off for Willow Springs, then Kyla Smith and Madeline Fair. Emma Roberts, Alicia Shanks, and Emma Spence are the next three. three, Kaylee Pendergrass, Sophia Jackson, and Madison Bay are the final three. As we are set for softball here from the Killian Sports Complex, as Chloe Jones digs in, here comes the first pitch from Reeder. It's it to the right side, an excellent play by the first baseman, Daniels, and it's one pitch and one out. I don't think you can have a better spark if you're Talon Reader. No, you can't. And looking over this team is what I'm looking at. All the records here. Uh, defense is huge for Diamond. They, they've got to play good defense. What we all say, no airs. Play good defense, solid defense. And, uh, you know, try to get some hits at the right time. As Kyla Smith will step into the circle. She sprays that one foul. Out of play in the count 0-1. On field two here, field one has Kennett and Lone Jack. Going at the same time, mm-hmm. winners will face off tomorrow morning at 11 in the stadium. As that pitch is low for a ball, so the count's one and one. The losers will play this afternoon at 2 o'clock for third place. So if you're winning, you get the rest of the day off as the 1-1 one, one pitch is just outside, Ooh. and the count's 2-1. and one. Mm. That was a good pitch. If She just missed it. She just missed it on the outside edge. Two and one the count here on Smith. Here comes the two one from Reader, and that's in there for a strike. And the count now two and two. Got his hand kept her there at high and tight, but she was wanting to make sure she get the two strikes. She's batting four hundred here, Smith is, so she's a good player. Comes the two two, and she's able to get a piece and foul it off. This count remains two and two, and Daryl, you know, loser has to play a second game today, but. Uh, softball, you're in baseball, really. You're used to playing double headers, so that really yeah. won't affect either of these teams. No. As here comes the 2 2 again. That's high and outside, and the count's full at 3 and 2. Obviously, you're hoping to win to get to that championship game, but if you have to play later on, you're still playing for third place. As here comes the 3 2, and that's high for ball four. So Smith works a one out walk. Madeline Fair will come to the plate. First baseman, number 21, Madeline Fair. One out here, and we'll see if there's a play on. As Smith, the runner at first base for Madeline Fair. So here comes the first pitch, and that's swung on and missed. And so the count's 0 1. This I feel, yeah, I got a feeling Turner may be trying to keep this ball on the outside part of the plate with the lefty up. There is a ball on the field. I wonder if <laughs> that one may have know. come from <laughs> field one because <laughs> nobody noticed it. Well, we had one foul ball earlier, and I'm wondering if they just tossed it over. So nobody co- saw it. So here comes the 0 1, and that's spoiled foul. So the count 0 2 is fair as late both times. Yeah, she's, it looks like to me she's a slap hitter. You know, likes to go the other way, make the long throws. She's probably fast and quick out of the box, being left-handed. And that's the reason you keep the ball on the outside part of the plate to hold her in there longer. So here comes the 0-2 from Reeder, and that's high. Throw behind the runner and getting back safely is Smith. <clears throat> you know, for the little bit of rain we had this morning, the field is in very good condition. So we had some thunderstorms roll through this morning. They probably didn't have to water it, because they always do. So here comes the 1-2, and that is outside, and the count's 2-2. Two and two. Reader being careful here, but you don't want to be too careful and give up another walk. Well, she tried to throw off the fir- that last batter, Smith. She tried to throw off, and then got down to a 3-2 count and just missed it. So here comes the 2-2, two, two, and that is low, and the count's full at 3-2, and two, as I think Reader trying to See if she would swing at it. She's not missing by much, just a little bit low. Yeah, you're going to have to throw it in there. So here comes a 3-2 pitch, and that hits the outside corner for strike three. Yep. 
First strikeout of the morning for Talon Reader as Emma Roberts will come to the plates. As she raised that up just a little bit, same spot, she just raised it up about a foot. Have to see if Willow Springs and Diamond have any common opponents here as that first pitch is low for a ball. She counts one and up. Looks like Springfield Catholic would definitely be one of them. Actually, Diamond does not play Springfield Catholic as I pitch is slow and throwing behind is Frazier. And the count's 2-0. Oh. So it doesn't look like there's really that many potential common opponents between these two teams. That 2 oh, is swung on and missed, so the count 2-1. This Diamond softball team really tested themselves this year. Obviously, you're going <laughs> to test yourself if you're 36 and 1. Trying to play everybody around. The 2 1 pitch is inside, and the count's 3 and 1, as some of the Diamond fans were wondering, and Grace Frazier getting an explanation as well. 3 and 1, the count here. Swung on and missed, and the count's full at 3 and 2. And now. Smith will get an extra head start. First Community Bank, Crowder College, Big Nickel, Webb Chiropractic, all sponsoring the broadcast here this morning. <clears throat> here comes the full count pitch. And that is low for ball four. So runners are at first and second, thanks to two walks, as number Alicia number Shanks seven, Alicia will Shanks. come to the plate. Well, she's missing, Ben. It's not by much. I mean, she's right there at the edge. So two base runners here for Willow Spring. It's courtesy of two walks. Two outs here. Reader still trying to get through the inning with no damage. First pitch is in there for a strike. Counts 0-1. GTC Broadband, Missouri Southern State University, Four State Sports Report, and the Diamond School District all sponsoring the broadcast. So here comes the 0-1. 0-1 is nubbed foul as a hitter in the box. <coughs> and the count goes to 0-2 here on Shanks. Busy day of sports for you on the KNEO Sports Network. We have this game here this morning. So here comes an 0-2 from Reader. That pitch is spoiled foul as Shanks gets a piece. Count remains 0-2. If Diamond were to fall, we'd have the third place game at two o'clock and then at five o'clock you have the class five district seven championship game between webb city and carl junction oh two is a slow roller to third a strong throw over by the jager a five three put out and that will end the inning four willow springs no runs no hits no errors they strand two at the end of a half inning, it is Willow Springs nothing and Diamond coming up here on the KNEO Sports Network. Southwest Missouri Bank in Neosho serves the Neosho area from two locations. They offer business banking services, including checking and savings accounts, business loans, and electronic banking. Learn more online at smbonline.com. Southwest Missouri Bank, a proud sponsor of community broadcasting on KNEO, equal housing lender, member FDIC, where their slogan is... A proud supporter of local high school athletics is GTC Broadband. They would like to wish all the area teams much success both in the classroom and during their athletic competitions. GTC Broadband is located at 126 South Beaver Avenue in Granby, Missouri and serve customers in the Granby and Diamond area. They offer internet and telephone service to both homes and businesses. To learn more, their website is www.gtcbroadband.net or by phone at 417-472-6211. Grace Frazier will lead things off here for Diamond in the bottom of the first. Grace Frazier, Caitlin Surrey, and Lauren Turner are the first three. Talon Reader, Aubrey Ball, and Marissa DeJager are the next three. Sarah Roselle, Talon Daniels, and Cabri Parmley are the final three. Willow Springs looks like this in the field. Karis Cochran in the left. In center field is Alicia Shanks. In the right field is Kaylee Pendergrass. Left to right in the infield at third base is Emma Roberts. At shortstop is Chloe Jones. At second base is Madeline is Kyla Smith. 
At first base is Madeline Fair with a battery of Sophia Jackson catching Emma Spence here this morning that will lead into this afternoon. They're like we were saying, a busy day here today. So you're reaching the climax of the spring sports season. You have Class 2 state semifinals and the third place game. Today, you also have the Class 5 District 7 championship game between Carl Junction 10. and Frazier. Webb City at 5 o'clock. And that game got moved to Missouri Southern. And I have a feeling that mm -hmm. game will draw a lot of fans from both schools originally. District in Belton had to move to Raytown South for day two. And then what usually happens is, is you know, you get two of the local schools that uh, to southwest Missouri that get to the championship game, and they don't want to have to drive no. two hours for a district title, and they usually find a neutral site. Last year, Webb City, Mack County played at Neosho, drew a big crowd. I expect Missouri Southern to have a big crowd tonight uh, for Webb City and Carl Junction. Yeah, I imagine that's a uh... – We've, we've watched Carl Junction play. You know, we know Webb said he's got a good team this year. But, uh, yeah, that's going to be a big one. Grace Frazier will lead things off here for the Lady Wildcats against Emma Spence. Here comes the first pitch. That pitch is hammered foul down the third base line. The count's 0-1. As both leadoff hitters swung at the first pitch. Difference is, is Chloe Jones grounded out. Grace Fraser hit one foul. They're expecting a slap as the third baseman, Emma Roberts, is playing in yeah, on she's, Fraser. She's close. She's got to be quick if she wants to. Of course, she, Fraser's fast. And she's going to try and bun her way on as the first baseman was playing back in the count's 0 and 2. If she'd have got that down, I think she'd have been on. So 0 and 2, the count on Fraser. Fraser needs to battle here now after. Throwing a zero on the top of the first. Games like this, scoring first is always so critical. As here comes the 0-2 and change up slow ball, whatever yep. you want to call yep. it, in the dirt and the count's one and two. And it is dirt. You get to say it correctly tonight, mm -hmm. today, Ben. One and two, the count here on Frazier. As here comes another one-two. That pitch is popped up in the air, left fielder. Coming in and grabbing it as that was Cochran. Looked like she might have been fighting the sun a little bit, but able to grab it for out number one. Uh, uh, it's it's number yeah, six. sun just straight yeah, sure. up in the air. But, yeah, I mean, if a high fly ball, yeah, you're going to have a the sun. You're going to have to battle the sun a little bit and use your glove. It's Caitlin Surrey who will step into the box here for Diamond. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, New Mac Electric, Prolu Maintenance Center, Pump and Pantry. All sponsoring the broadcast as that change up is in there. Counts 0 and 1. I mean, that's really the only that's, way I can call it. Yeah, that's an off speed pitch. Whatever you want to call it, change up. Just trying to change the speed up on her and let her off with it. It's a good pitch. So here comes the 0 1. And that pitch is laced to left center field. And it's going to roll all the way to the wall. That'll be at least two for Surrey. She's going to try and race to third. And she will be in there safely as the relay throw did not get in in time, and Surrey has a one-out triple. Good one right, right solid right in the gap, just a line drive all the way to the fence, man, and, and the speed of Surrey going around, around the bases. And uh, they just like dared, just daring me to throw, just throw me out if you can, and I don't think they could. It's Lauren Turner will try and drive her in. Turner at the plate here. Here comes the first pitch. That's outside. Counts 1-0. and oh. Max Steele, Southwest Missouri Bank, Christian Healthcare Ministries, Northwest Arkansas Naturals, sponsoring the broadcast. And before that triple, I was going to ask you, how big is it to get the first run of the game in these kind of games and scenarios? Yeah, that's huge. That one is swung on and missed. It popped out of the glove of the catcher, Jackson, but did not go very not, far not away. Not far enough, yeah. No, it's, it's huge to get off quick. It's huge to get off early. It's you know, give you a little bit of confidence and put pressure on the other team. One and one the count here on Turner. One one pitch is blooped in the air down the left field line for a single. Coming in to score is Caitlin Surrey and Diamond draws first blood. There's the top three. The, you know, the all three of them over 500 this year, and, and uh, that's where they get their good start. 
So a one out base runner and Lauren Turner as Talon Reader now will try and help out her own cause. Now you can see if Diamond can add on here. Well, you know, she's no slouch batting 467 is what they got. So that pitch was in the dirt. The count's 1 0, and actually. Got to play. Nope. <laughs> she got Taking there. second was Turner. And that was actually off of, I think they threw to the shortstop. No, it was a bad throw uh, back to the pitcher. pitcher. Both shortstop and second was on the base second, and the catcher just missed the pitcher to, their, to uh, the pitcher's right away from second base, and they both went after it. And so that's why she got down there to second base. 1-0 and the count. Here comes the 1-0. That's high. And the count's 2-0. Northwest Arkansas Naturals are at home at Arvest Ballpark Tuesday, May 21st through Sunday, May 26th versus the Amarillo Sod Poodles. Ticket information, nwanaturals.com. A proud supporter of high school softball here on KNO as that pitch is low, so the count's 3-0. Normally you say 3-0, you take, but if you're a cleanup hitter, it might be one of the few that has a green light. Mm, she likes it. And she yeah. was swinging on 3-0, and the count is now 3-1 here on Reader. Reader, your starting pitcher for Diamond, and she is a young one as well, only a freshman. 3 1 pitch is swung on and missed, and the count now 3 and 2. So, when your starting pitcher is only a freshman, she's the cleanup hitter, mm-hmm. and your starting pitcher in a state semifinal game, I think you're doing things right. Yep. 3 2 pitch is blooped foul. And that's going to get out of play, so the count will remain three and two. Stayed alive, battled it off. I mean, maybe not in her wheelhouse, but, uh, hey, at three and two, you've got to take it. Was it three and two now? Yes. Yeah. Full count here. Uh, you, I mean, you can't take it. you got to take a swing at it if it's close. That pitch is in the dirt. It actually hit Reader, which benefits yep. uh, Willow Springs because – <laughs> Turner cannot take third. Diamond School District is proud of the Lady Wildcats and all they've accomplished this season, both on the Diamond and in the classroom. Good luck, ladies, in the Class 2 state playoffs from everyone in the Diamond School District. We're with you every step of the way. <laughs> the scoreboard just went blank, so I don't know what's going on there. They've lost connection or something. But anyway, you know, Diamond won up. They got on, I think there's one out. And... Their, their base running, their speed is uh, putting some pressure on Willow Springs. And, and the coach is out there talking to him now. I think the coach is out there just trying to settle him down. Say, hey, hey, throw strikes. Let's play some defense. Let's get some outs. Yeah, long ways to go in this one. And, <clears throat> Daryl, we yeah. mentioned this team 36-1. and one, And like you said, only two seniors on this year's Diamond team. They're looking for their second state championship in three years. And only two seniors. You got to think they're going to be just as good next year. Oh, they got a lot of kids coming back and a, and a big lineup. I mean, uh, they've got a lot more kids out than Willow Springs is, so they they enjoy their softball down there. The coach over there is doing a good job. So here comes the first pitch to Aubrey Ball. That pitch is low. It actually gets by the catcher. So wild pitch now has runners at first and or second and third here with one out. One and zero the count here on Ball. They got the scoreboard working again. Yeah. One base hit right here. Just kind of break this game open here a little bit if they can get two in. It's the 1-0 pitch is low and blocked there by Jackson as it counts 2-0. I think if you're Willow Springs here, you have to try and keep this a 1-0 game after one because, you know, Diamond was able to get runners at first and second and hold them to no score there in the – yeah, it's going to be Top tough. Top of the first. So that 2-0 is in the dirt, and the count's 3-0. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to keep Diamond <clears throat> off the scoreboard down here in the first inning. Any second, more third. than what they have. Yeah, yeah. second, third, and and it's a 3-0 count. She may have the green line. She's batting over 400 herself this year. So here comes the 3-0, taking the entire way, and that's low for ball four. So the bases are loaded for Marissa DeJager. As the Jager comes to the plate. Now batting number 25, Marissa the Jager. And she's batting over 300 as well. 
Yep. And she's got 25 RBIs on the year. So no slouch. No. Not the number six hitter here for Diamond. I know slouch is down through that lineup. That pitch is inside for a ball. So counts 1-0. and oh. If you're Willow Spring, I would not be surprised if this is a short outing for Emma Spence if things continue well, this way. You never know. She's she's struggling to find the strike zone here and, and it, it get a good hit here. And that pitch is in there for a strike. Late strike call, but given, and the count's one and one. Yeah, Keep be- up on the latest broadcast ball game schedule. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash KNEO Radio. Follow us on X at KNEO 917 Sports. So here comes the 1-1-2 one, one, to Jager. That's pop foul, and it's going to get out of play. This counts one and two. It's so, first, yeah, it's the first time she's been ahead of a batter in quite a while. Since Grace Frazier, the count was one and two. Caitlin Surrey, the count was 0-1. Oh yeah. But since, really, the second batter of the game. Nice. One and two, the count here on DeJager. One, two pitch is in the dirt, and the count now two and two. Tried to take something off of it, see if she'd chase it. It's a beautiful complex here, the Killian Sports Complex. Hosts the spring and softball, spring and fall, excuse me. (laughs) As here comes the 2-2, and that is fouled off, so DeJager stays alive. Hosts the spring and the fall softball championships, and... You know, it's one of the few that for teams in southwest Missouri, it's not a long drive. Because you don't have to go to Columbia or St. Louis. So here comes the 2-2. That pitch is popped foul, and that's going to get into the Willow Springs fan base on the third base side, and the count stays at 2-2. Not sure if somebody mm. caught it or not. There's no, I don't think a lot caught of it. conversation over there with a couple of them. <laughs> so here comes another 2-2 to Jager. She does not offer, Ooh. able to <laughs> stay off of it. And the count's full at 3-2. and two. Now Spence has to throw a strike. She has to throw it in there. Anything close, I mean, she's got to, you know, you got to swing at it as well. 3-2, and two. you can't let anything go. So here comes the full count pitch. It's a third, a great play by the third baseman. Throws out at home. She potentially could have had two. She kind of bobbled it a little bit, but a good job there by Roberts because that was a line drive, a 5-2 put out. Bases remain loaded, but there's two outs now for Sarah Roselle. That was a hot shot to Roberts at third. Bobbled it, but she did have time to get it out at home. Yeah, she did a good job because it was a hot shot. That first pitch is low for a ball. So counts 1-0. and oh. <coughs> You're Willow Springs, and you can get out of this with only one run. run. You're going to take some momentum into the second inning. Yes. So here comes the 1-0. That's in there. Nope, it's inside. I <laughs> said that was in there, but that's inside for a ball, so the count's 2-0. and oh. Like I said, he. He's got a little tight strike zone, and as a pitcher, you just have to adjust. So here comes the 2-0, and that's inside, and the count's 3-0. and <clears throat> I think you're taking here a one, if not two, pitches for Roselle because she has to throw one in there. Mm. So here comes the 3-0 from Spence. And that is in there for a strike. The count's three and one. Late strike call, but it was a strike. See if Roselle's taking on 3-1. She's swinging, and it's foul tipped off the mask. And the count's full at three and two. Now with the runners going, if you can find a gap, that runner from first potentially could come in and score. Now, baby will be off on the pitch, no doubt about that. <clears throat> Three and two, the count on Roselle. Three, two, swung on and missed for strike three, and that is a big out for Emma Spence to end the inning. Diamond does score one run in the inning on two base hits. There were no errors, and Diamond strands three. One done here in Springfield, one nothing Diamond here on the KNO Sports Network. 
A proud supporter of local high school athletics is Numac Electric. Serving Newton and McDonald County, they provide power for area homes and businesses and want to wish all the athletes much success throughout the season. For online bill pay and account information, the website is newmac.com or 417-451-1515. Newmac Electric, proudly serving Newton and McDonald County, where their slogan is, your touchstone energy partner. A business impact partner of KNEO is ProLube Tire and Auto Center in Neosho. Serving the area since 2001, they're open Monday through Saturday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. ProLube Tire and Auto Center offers tire and brake repair, as well as transmission service, front end alignments, and more. Located at 1406 North Business 49 in Neosho. For more information, 417-455-9000 or online at ProLubeTireAndAuto.com. Emma Spence will lead things off here in the top of the second, and it hits her. So a hit by pitch allows the first base runner to reach as Kaylee Pendergrass will come to the plate. Pendergrass, Jackson, and Bay are the next three here for Willow Springs. Plate number 11. I have to Kaylee see if they try and bunt the runner over. Is there going to be a courtesy runner? They talking about if it hit her or not. I think the umpires are going to confer. Or no, they got to switch rotation. That's what it was. Yeah, take him away from third, the, the umpire. Yeah, make sure the umpires are set in the right spot. It's Kaylee Pendergrass come to the plate. As Reader has not given up a hit, but she has walked to and hit a batter. That first pitch is high and outside for a ball. So the count. Is one and zero. Oh. Have to see if there's potentially a bump play on here. Try and advance that runner to second. So here comes the one zero. Oh. That's high, and the count's two and zero. Oh. Two walks in the first, given up by Reader. She was able to work around them. Two and zero. Oh, the count here on Pendergrass after hitting Emma Spence to lead off the inning. Comes the two zero. Oh. And that's high. Counts three and up. Three balls and no strikes here on Pendergrass. So here comes the 3-0. That's in there for a strike, and the count's three and one. Taking the entire way was Pendergrass. We'll see if she's taking on 3-1. Yeah, the umpire's got it locked tight strike zone, so you're going to have to adjust. You're going to have to throw it in there to her. It's the 3-1 pitch is fouled straight back. And the count now 3-2. and two. Close to us. Right above our heads. 3-2 and two the count here on Pendergrass. So here comes a 3-2 pitch from Reeder. That's fouled straight back as well. <laughs> it's a good thing there's a fence here. <laughs> you don't think you'd have caught him? I, I don't. I don't know. Man, with your reflexes, are you kidding? You <laughs> snatched it out of the air. So here comes another full count pitch to Pendergrass. That pitch is hit in the air to center field, and that's going to drop in front of the center fielder Surrey. The runners are at first and second. Surrey mm. playing kind of deep out there in center field. Hit off the end of the bat, and that is the first base tip for Willow Springs. They have runners in business here. For the bottom of the lineup and Sophia Jackson and potentially Madison Bay as the entire infield is going to come in and talk to Reeder. Well, here you go. You know, Diamond here in the bottom of the first inning had bases loaded, putting some pressure. And when both one out, put some pressure on Willow Springs. And Willow Springs re- responded, got out of the inning with only one now run scored. 25, Sophie Jackson. And now they now have Diamond's got yeah. put pressure. I mean, Willow Springs put pressure on Diamond. So still nobody out here for Sophia Jackson. Now I wouldn't be surprised if a bump play was put on. Number eight hitter, and then you get your nine, one, and two. The third baseman's in a little bit. So here comes the first pitch, and that's high for a ball. Counts one and out. It's Reeder having to use a lot of pitches here so far. Here comes the 1-0. That hits the inside corner. 
count one and one. I had to hesitate there for a second and make sure it was called a strike. He says it, but then he signals it way late. So Hard to hear him say it as the one one is inside and the count's two and one. Don't really want to <laughs> load the bases for nine, one, and two. So Reader going to have to do some magic to dance out of this. Especially with no outs. So here comes the two one and a hits her. The bases are loaded. So two hit by pitches and a base hit as the base is loaded for Madison Bay. I think so. And so head coach for Diamond going to go out and have a conversation with the entire infield. See how long Reader will be out there for. Well, I was wondering, Ben. I was wondering if the coach wasn't coming now to question in the call because she CHR. stuck her elbow out. Yeah, she stuck yeah. her elbow out and got it. She didn't like that. She turned away, but she stuck her elbow out to make sure she got a piece of the ball. So, long ways to go here in this one as Madison Bay will try and start a rally. I mean... Diamond hit a ball in play, but it was a great play by the third baseman, Emma Roberts, to throw a home and get an out there. Madison Bay. As Madison Bay will step in the designated player. So here's the first pitch, and they were trying to bunt it, and getting back safely to third is Spence. Wasn't quite a suicide squeeze, but good job by the mm-hmm. shortstop Turner coming over to try and pick her off because the Spence went a little far down the line as that pitch is in there for a strike and the count quickly 0-2. Here she is left hand, got choked way up on the bat, so you know she's a little slap hitter. So here comes the 0-2 pitch from Reeder. Swung on and missed for strike three. A big first out of the inning for Reeder. As there's one out now for Chloe Jones, who grounded to first her first time up. And that was on the very first pitch of the game. And we might have a courtesy runner out at first base for Sophia Jackson. And we do. It looks like it's number two, Daryl. Which would I'm, be I'm Elizabeth sorry, Nichols. Yeah, Nichols. Chloe Jones. So Nichols running for Jackson as Percy running for the catcher. Chloe Jones will come to the plate. She's 0 for 1. She grounded to first base her first time up. Just wanting to make sure everybody got the change. So Jones, now it's Diamond's turn to see if they can wiggle out of bases loaded one out. Mm -hmm. Comes the first pitch from Reeder. That's in there for a strike. Counts 0-1 as Reeder has found the strike zone, it looks like. With the top of the lineup up, too, it's going to be tough for Diamond to get out of here with no runs. 0-1 the count here on Jones. So here comes the 0-1 from Reeder. That pitch is low. And the count's one and one. <coughs> you think it's low, and then <laughs> well, you have to make sure. <laughs> yeah. Looks like they're shading her to the right this time. Center fielder's on the right side of second base. So here comes the one one, and that's swung on and missed. So the count's one and two. This would be another big strikeout if Reeder could find a way to get the strikeout. One and two, the count here on Jones. One, two is just inside, maybe low as well. So the count two and two. Been a long inning and a half. So it's 11.36 and we're only yep. in the top of the second. Here comes the two, two. That's foul tipped off of the umpire, which he does not look any worse for wear. No. As the count remains two and two. First base coach wanted to make sure the umpire's okay. Well, the 
It's, it, yeah, it's a good shot to the face mask, but it's nothing like a baseball. So here comes the 2-2. Two -two. That's low, and the count's full at 3-2. and two. I think that one actually hit him on the shoulder, not the face mask. I did it. But it's still a shot. It's a shot. Count full now on Chloe Jones. Here comes the full count pitch from Reeder. That's dribbled foul. So Jones stays alive. Potentially was ball four. You never know. But you, like I said, as a batter like that, you do not want to leave it up to the umpire. You got two strikes on you. If it's close, swing at it, foul it, hit it, do something, put a bat on it. So here comes another 3-2 from Reeder. That's fouled back to the screen, and Jones and Reeder are having a good battle here. Pitch number nine of that bat coming up. Still one nothing diamond. But the bases are full of Lady Bears. So here you know, comes one out. Yeah. the three two again. That is inside for ball four. Uh, one out, bases loaded, walk, and Willow Springs has tied the game up at one. As Jones able to work a base on balls. Now Kyla Smith will come to the mound, and we are going to have a pitching change as Caitlin Surrey will come in to pitch. We will go ahead and take a 60-second break here on the KNEO Sports Network. Serving the area since 1997 is First Community Bank. With two Neosho locations, 111 East Main Street and 3005 Gardner Edgewood Drive, they offer a variety of banking services for individuals, families, and businesses, and have online banking options 24-7 at firstcommunity.net. For more information, their customer service number is 1-888-780-8391. First Community Bank, where their slogan is, where community comes first. Member FDIC. Crowder College, your future, our focus. At Crowder College, we have six convenient locations in southwest Missouri and online programs to fit your needs. Flexible scheduling provides a pathway to a career or the opportunity to transfer to a four-year university in a variety of programs. Cheer for the Rough Riders at athletic events. Use the Missouri A-plus scholarship program for free tuition and common fees. At Crowder College, your future is our focus. Apply today at crowder.edu. Hey, Nonprofit organization, a sponsor of KNEO. Caitlin Surrey coming in to pitch here for Talon Reader. It looked like Reader is going out to right field, and it looks like Roselle will move from right to center field as Surrey completes her warm up tosses as Kyla Smith will come to the plates. Smith walked her first time up. So we are tied at one. They have not. Put up the well, Ben. I thought she was working out there to right field. But I think she moved to second, second base. base. She moved to second okay. base. So she, so Reader moves to second base. Actually, we'll have to see where Ball. Ball moved. might have moved to center because that's where Surrey came from. Smith will work against Surrey. We're tied at one. Yeah. Kyla Smith. Here comes the first pitch, and that's hit on the ground, potentially two. They only get one. It's a six to three put out. RBI ground out means that Willow Springs takes the lead back at two to one. Those runners will be at first and third now. Excuse me. They'll second be at third. second and third. Yep, if they're at it first. On the fielder's choice. Yeah, she didn't have any more. She didn't have a choice. That's all she had. Madeline Fair will come to the plates. As now they're going to have a conversation, and I think they're going to want to talk about potentially runners interference, which was not there because, say, the runner yeah. maybe interfered with Lauren Turner at shortstop. But they're not going to say there was any. Two outs here for Fair. As here comes the first pitch to her. That's in there for strikes. Counts 0-1. Surrey has come in and painted the strike zone. As Smith swung at the first pitch. And now Fair takes an 0-1 count. 
So here comes the 0-1. That pitch is golfed up the middle and through. One run going to come in and score. They send the runner home, and she is caught in a rundown. And it's going to be a long rundown, and she is out at the plate. So one run will come in and score on an RBI single for Madeline Fair as it's a single, and then it is a 8 to (laughs) 2 to 5 put out to end the inning. For Willow Springs, though, they get three runs in the inning, courtesy of two base hits. There were no errors, and they strand one. One and a half done here in Springfield. 3-1 Willow Springs here on the KNEO Sports Network. Are there things in your life you wish you could change? I suppose we all have some habit that always seems to come back at the wrong time. It tears us down and leaves us feeling like God is tired of how many times we failed. The truth is, God never tires of you. He knows everything about you and still sent Jesus to pay the price for your sins. There's no limit on His love or grace. If you want to learn more about that kind of relationship with Jesus, then call 888-NEED-HIM or chat with us at chataboutjesus.com. Max Steel Incorporated in Diamond, Missouri is proud to be supporting this portion of the game. They specialize in metal building supplies including residential and commercial garage doors, vinyl siding, plus windows and insulation for commercial and residential. Open Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock a.m. to 4.30 p.m. and closed on Saturday and Sunday. Max Steel Incorporated located at 17982 Elder Road in Diamond, Missouri or online at maxsteelinc.com. 417 5300. And we welcome you back as Talon Daniels, Cabri Parmley, and Grace Frazier are the three do up here for Diamond as they look to respond. We talk about momentum, Daryl, and yeah. Willow Springs able to get out of the first with only one run given up off the bases loaded, and then they score three in their half of the inning. Yeah, I mean, Diamond put pressure on Willow Springs. <clears throat> Willow Springs responded in the bottom of the first, got out, like you said, with only one run, bases loaded. Diamond, not so well. Willow Springs got three of them in. So here comes the 1-0, and that's inside, so the count, 2-0. and uh, Diamond had two hits in the first inning, but only able to get one run across. There was a good play at third base to save a run as well. So here comes the 2-0 to Daniels. Swung on and missed, so the count two and one. Diamond is used to being behind, so they won't be scared by that. They were behind 2 nothing and 3-1 versus Mount Vernon before scoring three in the fourth mm-hmm. to win that game 5-3. So the 2-0-1 is swung on and missed, so the count's two and two. Yeah, I don't think they're going to panic. They're not going to run away yet. Two and two the count here on Talon Daniels. There's a good answer for Willow Springs, though. So here comes the 2-2, and that's swung on and missed for strike three. Second strikeout of the morning for Spence as Cabri Parmley will come to the plate. That's her second strike in a row uh, off of back-to-back batters in two separate innings. As Cabri takes the ball inside, so the count's 1-0. First Community Bank, Crowder College, Big Nickel, Web Chiropractic, all sponsoring the broadcast. 1 0 the count here on Parmley. And here comes the 1 0. That's low, so the count's 2 0. For Parmley, you're just trying to find a way on for the top of your lineup. Yeah. Fraser, Surrey, and Turner are the three at the top of the order. Fraser will get an at bat no matter what happens, but. Need runners on for Surrey and Turner. So here comes the 2-0. That's high for ball three. Talon Daniels had a 2-0 count before Spence came back and threw three straight strikes, but that pitch was high. This counts 3-0. This might be a take here just because you want to try to get on. 3-0 pitch. Hits the outside corner. And the count's 3-1. This also might be a take with a 3-1 count and your number nine hitter. Well, it's got to be in your wheelhouse, I think, if you want to swing at it. The 3-1 is fouled off, and 
Spence has worked it from 3-0 to 3-2. So three and two the count now on Parmlin. Same thing as the first hitter up. Three and oh, then she's come back and battled back and got him. Let's see what she can do right here. So here comes the three two pitch from Spence. That pitch is hit in the air to right center field. It'll roll all the way to the wall or to try and cut it off, but in there with the stand up double is Parmley. Good job by her. And a one out double for the bottom of the lineup as Grace Frazier will come to the plates. You got your big hitters coming up for Diamond. Here's their chance to come back and answer Willow Springs, see if they can't get some base hits and score some runs. As Grace Frazier flew out to left field her first time up. That one kind of died out there in the outfield. That grass looks like it's pretty heavy. So here comes the first pitch to Frazier. She takes a ball high. She counts 1-0. GTC Broadband, Missouri Southern State University, Four State Sports Report, and the Diamond School District all sponsoring the broadcast. Normally talk about how quick softball games are. This one is dragged on a little bit as Frazier going to try and bunt her way on it as a beautiful bunt and <clears throat> safe at first. And now no one's covering second, so Frazier will take second. Not very often you have a double on a bunt. The third baseman... Roberts was worried about the runner at third. At and, second. Or excuse me, at yeah. second. And then nobody covered second base. Yeah, the shortstop went to cover third. Now second baseman, I think, went third. to cover first. Turn around, there's no one there. So Frazier just took advantage of it. Now you got your big hitters up. Caitlin Surrey tripled her first time up mm-hmm. to left center. So that first pitch is low for a ball. So counts 1-0. and oh. So... You have your big hitters and Surrey and Turner trying to tie the contest up. Yeah, if, you, if you're Diamond, this is what you want. You got your good hitters up. Bases low, or bases at second and third. So here comes the 1 0 pitch from Spence. Swung on and missed. Counts 1 and 1. I wonder if she thought she foul tipped it because she looked back at the catcher. Well, I don't know, but she took a cut on that one, Ben. I thought she was wanting to try to hit one over the fence. She's she got 12 trying. home runs, I think, this year. So yeah, far. she was trying to go over the double fence. Yeah. Try hit and it. hit some of those cars out there. Hit it in the parking lot. So here comes the 1-1. That gets bossed. The catcher and a fast backstop here does not allow Parmley to come home as... That one slipped out of the hands of Spence. Yeah, it's not very deep back here on the backstop, but that didn't didn't have anything, no no deflection, no nothing. The backstop come right back at him. Two and one the count here on Surrey. So here comes the two one from Spence. That's in the dirt, so the count's three and one. Frazier was about halfway to third, mm. but she's quick <laughs> enough to get back as Parmley wasn't able to read that one that well, but she would have had a hard time getting home yeah. on that one. She would have. As here comes a 3-1, and that's low for ball four. So now the bases are loaded for Lauren Turner, who had an RBI single her first time up. She's had nine yeah, home runs this year too, Lauren Ben. She's, this is not what you want for Willow Springs. One out here and one of the better hitters for Diamond at the plate. It's Diamond trying to get a rally going of their own. That first pitch is popped foul and it's going to get out of play. As you mentioned, Daryl, you know, compared to some places, there is not a lot of foul territory here in the Killian Sports Complex. No, there's not much. But Willow Springs got out of this same scenario. First inning, see if they can in second inning. Oh, one pitch is hit in the air to left field, and it is caught out there, and they double off Frazier at third base, at second base, and that will end the inning. It's an F7 and then a 7 4 put out, and Willow Springs dances out of danger. Four diamond, no runs off of two base hits, 
were no errors, and they strand two. Two down here in Springfield. 3-1 Willow Springs on the KNO Sports Network. A proud supporter of local high school athletics is GTC Broadband. They would like to wish all the area teams much success both in the classroom and during their athletic competitions. GTC Broadband is located at 126 South Beaver Avenue in Granby, Missouri, and serve customers in the Granby and Diamond area. They offer internet and telephone service to both homes and business to learn more, their website is www.gtcbroadband.net or by phone at 417-472-6211. Tally Tire is excited to support local area high school sports and cheers on all the dedicated school athletes in their endeavors. Located at the junction of Highway 59 and 86 east of Neosho, they specialize in a variety of automotive services including alignments, oil changes, engine diagnostics, and more. For more information, the phone number for Tally Tire is 417-451-0457 or online at tallytire.com. Four, five, and six do up for Willow Springs here in the third. Emma Roberts, Alicia Shanks, and Emma Spence will be working against Caitlin Surrey, who begins her first full inning of work here. She got two-thirds of an inning there in the second inning as Diamond will have to try and throw up a zero here in the third. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, New Mac Electric, Perlu Maintenance Center, Pump and Pantry, all sponsoring the broadcast. Well, you can't get a worse start for Diamond. Base is loaded both the bottom of the first and the second inning, and you only get one run. Willis Springs put some pressure on him, got three runs in the top of the second. Diamond's got to respond. It's Emma Roberts walked her first time, steps in, and fouls out one straight back. It's counts 0-1. It's Willis Springs having all the momentum right now. Yeah, you thought. Diamond might have gotten some of that back until that double play happened. No one pitch is spoiled foul as well. So the count's 0-2. Yeah, they doubled Frazier off a second. She just got off too far. I think she thought the ball was down and took off and then realized, oh, it's going to get caught. And By that time, it was too late to get back to bag. So Parmley moved to center field, so we'll have to see who went to left. His offering at it was yeah. Roberts, and that is... The first strikeout for Surrey as Alicia Shanks will come to the plates. So Parmley moved from left to center. And so maybe the second baseman went to, maybe ball went to left field. Here comes the first pitch to Shanks. She grounded to third her first time up. Popped in the air foul and it's out of play. Count on one. I was waiting for that to hit the canopy. <laughs> hit the tent right above us. Yeah. Oh, and one the count here on Shanks. I'm sure he's coming in throwing strikes. That's the difference right here. She's throwing strikes at him. It's the 0 one is laced down the left field line. It's a fair ball, and it'll be a long single as the left fielder able to cut it off. And a one-out base runner here for Willow Springs as Emma Spence will come to the plates. Spence will try and help her own cause. See if they don't try to put a little pressure on Frazier here. She was hit by a pitcher first time up. That pitch is in there for a strike, so the count's 0-1. Max Steele, Southwest Missouri Bank, Christian Healthcare Ministries, Northwest Arkansas Naturals, all sponsoring the broadcast. So that 0 1 pitch is nubbed foul on the count, nothing and two. They want to talk about catcher's interference, but head coach isn't going to talk about it. As the coach wants to ask about catcher's interference. And I don't think they're probably going to grant it. Because normally you can hear a double thud. Yeah, they wouldn't. Have. And the home plate umpire is usually the one that can hear it right away. And he's not even asking for help. Yeah. 0-2 oh, the count here on Spence. 
The 0-2 is in the dirt. Good block by Frazier, which keeps Shanks at first base. Well, that was a good one. She dug down there and blocked it and came up with it. One and two the count now on Spence. So one, two is low. Throw behind the runner. Have the runner picked off. It's oh, no. two, three, and the getting back safely because the first baseman left her bag. They had her picked off potentially. Would have gone two, three, six, but getting back to the bag is Emma Spence. Well, the first baseman me, didn't run Shanks. her down. I mean, yes, yeah, the first baseman out there, she didn't run her down and, and make her go off the base where someone else can come back in. Two and two, the count now on Spence. Comes the two two. That's outside. The count's three and two. Shanks a big lead over at first. Frazier could potentially throw over again at some point. Try and get her, but the count now full on Spence. Well, you know, Willow made it, Springs made a mental error and Diamond didn't take care of it. That pitch is spoiled foul. So the count remains three and two. Diamond didn't take advantage of it, so that those things can come back and bite you when you're making mental errors. Three and two, the count. Once again on Spence. So here comes another full count pitch from Surrey. The full count offering is low for ball four. The runners are at first and second. The bottom of the lineup that produced for Willow Springs the first time. Pendergrass reached and scored in the second. She singled her first time up. Northwest Arkansas Naturals are at home at Arvis Ballpark Tuesday, May 21st through Sunday, May 26th versus the Amarillo Side Poodles. For ticket information, nwanaturals.com. Proud supporter of high school softball on KNEL. Comes the first pitch from Surrey. Swung on and missed by Pendergrass. So the count's 0-1. Took until the fourth inning a couple weeks ago for Diamond to really get rolling against Mount Vernon. See if they can get things rolling in the third. That ball is lined back to the pitcher. Throws to second and out at yeah. second base. They are going to call her out. It is an L1 and then a one to six put out, and that will end the inning, and we'll see if that gives Diamond some momentum. No runs, one hit, no errors, stranding one is Willow Springs. Two and a half done here in Springfield. 3-1 Willow Springs on the KNEO Sports Network. If you're a weekend warrior who likes to go, 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 don't let pain put the brakes on your pace. When you need help with an injury that keeps you from moving, you want an orthopedic team with a proven track record. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine is nationally recognized and were recently named CareCheck's number one hospital in the market and top 10% hospital in the state for hip fracture repair. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, the experience you need to keep pace with life. A nonprofit organization, a sponsor of high school sports. Pump and Pantry at the intersection of Missouri 45 and Highway 59 is a proud supporter of Diamond Lady Wildcats. They're open till 11 p.m. seven days a week. They're a convenience store with a large number of breakfast options and made-from-scratch cheesecakes. For more information, the number is 417-358-1955. Pump and Pantry for all your convenience needs and go Cats! The Diamond School District is proud of the Lady Wildcats and all they have accomplished this season, both on the Diamond and in the classroom. Good luck, ladies, in the Class 2 state playoffs from everyone in the Diamond School District. We're with you every step of the way. Diamond will have their four, five, and six hitters due up here in the bottom of the third. Reader, Ball, and DeJager. And we'll see if Diamond can get themselves some momentum back. They drag some momentum from Willow Springs there. See if the middle of the lineup can, you know, produce. I mean, I don't know how much you can produce. You got bases loaded the first two innings, Ben, and, and we can't and Diamond can't get only but one run in. That tells you a good job how Willow Springs is defensively. We're past the top of the noon hour. You're listening to KNEO 91.7 FM, Neo Show Joplin. Live online at KNEO.org. As it will be 4-5-6, Talon Reader 
was hit her first time. Aubrey Ball and Marissa DeJager are the three due up. All three of them reached in the first. None of them scored, though. So here comes the first pitch to Reeder. And that's in there for strikes. Counts 0 and 1. Keep up on the latest broadcast ball game schedule. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash KNEO Radio. Follow us on X at KNEO 917 Sports. So here comes the 0 1. That's low. Counts 1 and 1. Diamond team has been behind before, so I don't think they will be. I don't want to say worried, but you know, if they won't. They won't be too stressed out. One and one the count here on Reader. That's inside, so the count's two and one. I don't know any word other word to say other than too stressed out. No, yeah, they're not they're not uh, they're not getting nervous yet. This is just a game they're in it and and uh, they've had their chances. They just can't get it a timely hit to get things going. The two one pitch hits the outside corner. The count's two and two. Seneca, Seneca, if Diamond were to <laughs> fall here, we would have that 2 o'clock game for you. If they were to win, we'll have the 11 o'clock state championship tomorrow. So here comes the 2-2, and that's outside. Counts 3-2. and two. Scoreboard has it as the fourth inning. It's the third inning, right? It's the bottom of the third. That's what I thought. 3-2 and two the count here on Reader. Comes the 3-2. That's inside for ball four and a leadoff walk. As Aubrey Ball will come to the plate. She walked her first time up. Willow Springs is giving Diamond every opportunity oh, yeah. possible to. Yeah. And they've made plays behind him. That pitch is spoiled foul, so the count's 0-1 here on ball. They've, they've made plays behind them and Spence when they've had to. Diamond made a, a base running error last time. They took advantage of it. Uh, they've had every opportunity to score Diamond has. They just can't get it done, and that's a lot of things that Willis brings. Yeah, Diamond left three stranded in the first, two in the second. So that pitch is outside, maybe low. And the count's 1-1. One has been a long first two-plus innings with all the base runners for both teams. Willow Springs is stranded four. So that pitch is popped up in the air, and catching it is going to be the shortstop, yep. Jones. And Just so there's one out as Reed are able to get back to the bag safely. Now batting number 25. She had to hustle Anderson to get there, but... That was one of those, another one of those. I mean, shortstop made a great play. Had to run in there and just barely snag it before it hit the ground. As the Jager will come to the plate, she grounded into Fielder's Choice her first time up. That was the play that the third baseman threw home. So here comes the first pitch. Popped up in the air. First baseman going to grab it. That's only the second out and back safely. I don't think yeah, t- yeah. they realized Reader how many didn't outs. Understand. There were. Yeah, Reader was getting ready to walk off, and then she had to find out she had to hustle back. I think they had her if she didn't bobble the ball over there. Second base was covering. Sarah Roselle will come to the plate. As Roselle struck out her first time up. So here comes the first pitch. Hit through the left side for a single. Runners will be at first and second now as Talon Daniels will come to the plates. Once again, Daryl, Yeah. some base runners here for Diamond, but can they take advantage? Runners in scoring position, and they haven't now been able to. It's just, I know they're getting frustrated over there, They're, you know, but. So two outs here for Daniels, as here comes the first pitch to her. Popped in the air foul, and that's going to sneak out of play. Whoa. The count's 0-1. Rattled around in the stands for a little bit. So 0-1 the count here on Daniels. Got to wonder how many more opportunities Diamond is going to have. So here comes the 0-1 pitch. Popped foul, and the first baseman just runs out of room as it 
goes on the dugout. So the count 0 and 2 now on Daniels, who needs to battle. Now, if it's close, Emma's likes to throw it off. She's having a little bit more command of her pitches here this inning. She hasn't walked on. She walked one, but 0-2, she's going to throw it off and around the plate somewhere. Comes the 0-2. That pitch is blooped in the air, down for a base hit, and the bases will be loaded as Cabri Parmley will come to the plate. Parmley had a double her first time up. Once again, third straight inning. That diamond has loaded the bases. Got bases loaded. They're putting all the pressure on Willow Springs, but Willow Springs has responded the first two innings. Here it is again, bottom of the third, bases loaded. Can you get the right hit at the right time for diamond? That's what they've been lacking. Base hit would probably score two and tie the contest. Emma Spence is not throwing fast, but she's around the zone and letting her fielders do work for her. So that first pitch is in there for a strike. So the count's 0-1. I have to watch wild pitches as well, just how lively this backstop is. You're going to have a hard time scoring on a wild pitch. 0-1 the count on Parmley. Ball hit to the left side and through the left side. One run will come in and score. So it's now 3-2, an RBI single for Parmley. And now you get back to the top of the lineup in Grace Frazier. All this done with two outs in the last two in, two base hits. So Diamond gets one run. They didn't want a chance the runner getting thrown out at home uh, well, with two outs. You don't want to take the bat out of this girl's hands. That's Frazier know. had an very not very often you see this, a bunt double. Yeah. Her last time up. She's also flown out to left. That pitch hits nope, nope inside. inside. So counts one and oh. She's a slap hitter, so you're going to have to get her pretty quickly. That pitch is hit to second, throws to first, and in time, the first base coach thought she was off the bag, but it's a 4-3 put out. That will end the inning. Four diamond, one run in the inning on three base hits. There were no Andrews, and they strand three. Three done here in Springfield, 3-2 Willow Springs. Here on the KNEO Sports Network. Southwest Missouri Bank in Neosho serves the Neosho area from two locations. They offer business banking services, including checking and savings accounts, business loans, and electronic banking. Learn more online at smbonline.com. Southwest Missouri Bank, a proud sponsor of community broadcasting on KNEO, equal housing lender, member FDIC, where their slogan is. KNEO would like to thank the Big Nickel for sponsoring this portion of broadcasting on 91.7 FM. The Big Nickel is an advertising shopper for thousands of different items, from automobiles and livestock to help wanted and real estate. It covers a 70-mile radius in the four-state area and is available in area businesses each week. Located at 2918 East 20th Street in Joplin, Missouri. Their telephone number is 417-624-4100. Sophia Jackson will start off the top of the fourth here for Willow Springs, 8, 9, and 1. Jackson, Bay, and Jones, anybody who reaches Smith, would come to the plate for Willow Springs. As Right now, through three innings, Diamond has left eight base runners, and yet they're only down one. I, Like I said, you know, Willow Springs is making plays behind them. They got one base hit, scored one run, but uh, they're getting out of the innings, and Playing defense, and that's what it takes. And Diamond's being frustrated, but the first pitch to Jackson is fouled off. So the count's 0 and 1. Jackson was hit by a pitch. Bay struck out. Jones is 0 for 1 with a walk. The longer Willow Springs can hang around, the tighter at least the fans will get for Diamond. <laughs> so 0 1 pitch is spoiled. Foul. Yeah, they might get a little nervous anyway. Did that hit the catcher? Oh, that no, was... No, no, oh, no. 
the batter lost her card. I wondered what that was. It's 0-2 the count as Jackson came undone a little bit there. Now going to have to tuck in the front of her jersey. 0-2 the count here on Jackson. This has been a long first three innings. Yeah. I mean, you got base runners and walks. and 0-2 oh, and the count here on Jackson. Here comes the 0-2. Oh, Popped an air foul, and third baseman took a look. The J- Jager took a look, but couldn't grab it, so the count remains 0-2. Oh, pretty good haul for that right up against the fence. But. Count remains 0-2 oh, here on Jackson. Here comes another 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed for strike three. One out here. Second strikeout for Surrey. It's Madison Bay. will come to the plate. And we might have a... So Cochran will... She's the, she's the flex player, so she's going to bat for herself instead of the designated player Bay batting for her. Now batting number nine, Cochran. So Cochran will bat instead of Bay. Okay. This here comes the first pitch. Must have been high. This counts one and zero. Oh. Normally you're through five or six innings in a softball game in an hour and fifteen minutes, and we've only gotten through three. That pitch is high, so the count's 2-0. and oh. We've only gotten through three and a third. Like I said, Ben, there's been a lot of <clears throat> been a lot of walks and some base hits and a lot of kids on base. We just ain't got them in. Diamond has it. 2-0 is low, and the count now 3-0. and oh. A lot of hit-by-pitches and walks as well between yeah. the two teams. Yeah. Surrey has walked one so far, but... Reader walked three and hit two. So the 3-0 is right there, and the count's three and one. <coughs> Second semifinal is supposed to start here at uh, one fifteen. I don't know if that's going to happen. It's an hour away. So here comes the 3-1, and that's in there, and the count's full at three and two. Winner of this contest will face the winner of Kennett and Lone Jack is going on on field one at the moment. We do not have a score from that one. Oh. The 3-2 pitch is in there for a called strike three. Back-to-back strikeouts as Cochran can't swing the bat. And there's two down here for Chloe Jones who's 0 for 1 with a walk. I do believe she scored in the first inning too, didn't she? She did not. She got she thrown not. out to end the second inning. Oh, okay. She also grounded out in the first. So first pitch is spoiled foul. That's right. So the count's 0-1. Surrey has definitely settled things down here for Diamond. Surrey, one of those two seniors. Reader is only a freshman, so I have to wonder if a little bit of nerves were part of play for Reader as that pitch is swung on and missed, so the count 0-2. Surrey ain't a bad arm to have in the bullpen, though. No, it's not. And Reader's not a bad arm either. She just Maybe she just struggled a little bit finding the strike zone. 0-2 the count here on Jones. Here comes 0-2 from Surrey. That's inside. Count 1-2, and two, trying to see if she would chase. 1-2 the count here on Jones. So here comes a 1-2 from Surrey. That's spoiled foul, so Jones gets a piece to stay alive. <coughs> His count remains one ball, two strikes. As Surrey trying to strike out the side. So here comes the one-two pitch. That's popped up in the air in foul territory and out of play. His count remains one and two. Fan couldn't make a play. It's not, EF. Yeah. It's not like the 
<clears throat> Savannah Bananas where uh, if fan catches it, it's an out. Count remains one and two here on Jones. Here comes another one-two from Surrey. Hit two second. Reader can't grab it. And reaching on the error is going to be Chloe Jones, a two-out base runner for Willow Springs as Kyla Smith come to the plate. She is grounded out to short and walked. Well. Reader tried to get over there in front of that, and she just couldn't quite get over in front. Probably should have been one like backhanded, but she tried to get over in front of it. As Kyla Smith will come to the plate, 0 for 1 with a walk. So here comes the first pitch. That's low. This counts 1 and 0. Those Willow Springs base runners probably need to worry about Grace Frazier behind the plate because she... Well, she's got an arm on her. Uh, they almost had one runner picked off earlier. So here comes the 0-1-0. Oh, Swung on and missed. This counts 1-1. One and, one. and She is not afraid to throw behind the runner. No. 1-1 one and on one the count here on Smith. So here comes the 1-1. One, one. Foul back to the backstop and the count... Now one and two. Surrey, another chance to get out of the inning. Another one where she's a strike away from getting out of the inning. So here comes a one-two pitch to Smith. Comes a one-two from Surrey. That's low. Frazier can't quite block it. A good read by Jones. And she takes second on the wild pitch. Two and two the count on Smith. If you're Surrey, you're just worried about the base runner. <coughs> yeah, exactly. The base runner is one of the counts, and Frazier did a good job <laughs> just to block that and keep it in front of her. Two and two the count here on Smith. So here comes the 2-2 two -two from Surrey. Hit two, Turner at short. Throws to first in time, <coughs> and that will end the inning. Four Willow Springs. No runs, no hits. One error, one left. Three and a half done. Three, two Willow Springs here on the KNEO Sports Network. Where will you be in four years? At Missouri Southern State University, we're here to help you achieve your life goals. Small class sizes allow you to develop a more personal relationship with your instructors and practice your skills in immersive environments. From a healthcare simulation center to crime scene investigation, state-of-the-art science labs, a mock courtroom, and much more. Study abroad opportunities can help you develop a global mindset. Learn more about our high quality educational opportunities at mssu.edu. A nonprofit organization, a sponsor of high school sports. Serving the area since 1997 is First Community Bank. With two Neosho locations, 111 East Main Street and 3005 Gardner Edgewood Drive, they offer a variety of banking services for individuals, families, and businesses and have online banking options 24 7 at firstcommunity.net. For more information, their customer service number is 1-888-780-8391. First Community Bank, where their slogan is, where community comes first. Member FDIC. Heart of the order due up for Diamond here in the bottom of the fourth. Surrey, Turner, and Reader. Anybody who reaches ball will come to the plate. Number six, Caitlin Surrey. Diamond has loaded the bases all three innings, and they only have two runs to show for it. <laughs> can't get that timely hit, can't get that spot at the right time. Just, I mean, they're then they're putting pressure on Will Springs, but Will Springs has made plays behind them <clears throat> and kept them at bay. Surrey, one for one. She walked in the second after tripling in the first. So here comes the first pitch from Spence. That's in the dirt, so counts one and oh. Spence has done a good job working around trouble. Diamond has seven hits and stranded eight base runners, but only has two runs to show for it. Yeah, like, I mean, like I said, they've played plays before, and she's kept the ball in play. The 1-0 is low. Hits the catcher on the mask. It hit Count. The, yeah, it hit the front of the plate and bounced right up and hit the catcher. It's Jackson, no worse for wear. 2-0 the count. Well, she's done a good job behind the plate. They're on Surrey. You know Surrey's got a green light 2-0. Oh, yeah. Comes the 2-0. That's in there for a strike, so the count's 2-1. First Community Bank, Crowder College, Big Nickel, 
Webb Chiropractic off sponsoring the broadcast. Two and one the count here on Surrey. So here comes the two one pitch. That's high, and the count's three and one. Tried to drop it back down, but could not quite do it. Through an off-speed pitch, and it, did, it did come down like the one before. Three and one the count here on Surrey. Comes the three one. That ball has popped a mile high. Left fielder a long ways to come, and she will grab it for out number one. As that's Cochran out there. For yep. out number one, as Lauren Turner comes to the plate, she has singled good. and flown Lauren out. Turner. Well, she's done a great job. Cochran's done a great job, made several plays out there in left field. So one out here for Lauren Turner. It's one for two. We've had a couple base hits with two runners on second base out at the Cochran, and they won't they won't try to uh, come home on her. So here comes the first pitch, and that's outside for a ball. So the count's one and zero. Oh. Freeman Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, New Mac Electric, Pro Lube Maintenance Center, Pump and Pantry, all sponsoring the broadcast. As here comes the 1 0 to Turner. Swings and misses, and the count's 1 and 1. That pitch might have been outside, but she liked it. 1 and 1 the count here on Turner. Willow Springs has had runners in every inning. Diamond has as well, as that pitch is outside, so the count's 2 and 1. <clears throat> well, those Springs a 3-2 lead. They scored th- three runs in the second. So here comes the 2-1. That pitch is off of Turner, so the count's 2-2. Two and two. She was hit in the box. Yeah. So count now 2-2. Two and two. Spence doesn't have a lot of strikeouts, but she's letting her fielders do the work for her. She's keeping the ball in play, making Diamond have to hit it. Here comes the 2-2. Swung on and missed for strike three. That is the third strikeout of the afternoon for Spence. Talon Reader will come to the plate. She has been hit by a pitch and walked, so she does not have an official at bat. Talon Reader. So Talon Reader. I think she got hit with a 3-2 count, did she not, man? She did. And also had a 3-2 count the first time as well. Ball hit to third. Throws to first in time for the putout. That is the first one, two, three inning of the ball game. As we are through four innings of play, Willow Springs has a 3-2 lead here on the KNEO Sports Network. A proud supporter of local high school athletics is GTC Broadband. They would like to wish all the area teams much success both in the classroom and during their athletic competitions. GTC Broadband is located at 126 South Beaver Avenue in Granby, Missouri and serve customers in the Granby and Diamond area. They offer internet and telephone service to both homes and businesses. To learn more, their website is www.gtcbroadband.net or by phone at 417-472-6211. Are you tired of running, running from one pleasure to the next, from one bad choice to another? Maybe the path you've been running has brought your world to a screeching halt. But there's hope. Jesus Christ loves you and offers another way. He died for our sins and offers forgiveness, hope, and a new start. If you want to learn how to have a personal relationship with God Himself, then just call or text us at 888-NEED-HIM or chat with us online at chataboutjesus.com. It's time to stop running. Madeline Fair will lead things off for Willow Springs here in the fifth. Three, four, five. Fair, Roberts, and Shanks. The three do up for Willow Springs as they have had base runners in every inning. That bottom of the fourth was the first half inning that went one, two, three. Yeah, for Diamond, yeah. They, Diamond's loaded the bases up every inning except for that inning. So, little momentum switch to Willow Springs. Fair, one for two. Both are hits as that pitch is in there. Nope, outside. The count's 1-0. and Fair singled in the second, and she struck out in the first. Both those at-bats were off of tail and reader. So here comes the 1-0 from Surrey. That pitch is laced down the left field line foul. Count 1-1. One and one. Hit some of the fans down that left side. Yeah, just cleared the fence. <clears throat> Counts one ball and one strike here on fair. 
Surrey has come in and settled things down here for Diamond. Just a question of if you can get the offense going. Now the offense has just been lacking a little bit, just not a timely hits at the right time. So that pitch is in there for a strike, so the count's on one and two now oh, yeah. on fair. So hit that inside corner. One and two the count here on fair. Here comes the one, two. Swung on and missed for strike three. As Surrey has settled things down as that is her fourth strikeout. Reader went one and a third innings, one hit, three runs, three earned, three base on balls, two strikeouts. <clears throat> she could re-enter at pitcher if needed, but the way Surrey's pitching, I don't think anybody else will tell the rubber as Surrey throws a strike over the plate on Emma Roberts. The count's on one. Roberts 0 for 1. Struck out in the third off of Surrey. Walked off of Reeder. A one swung on and missed. So the count 0 and 2. Diamond will have 5, 6, 7 due up in their half of the fifth. This game, talk about how it gets late early. It's getting to that point. Oh, it's two pitch hits the outside corner for strike three. Back to back strikeouts for Surrey. As Shanks will come to the plate, she's singled in the third. She's also grounded out to third in the first. She's one for two. She got picked off in the third by Surrey. Max Steele, Southwest Missouri Bank, Christian Healthcare Ministries, Northwest Arkansas Naturals, all sponsoring the broadcast. That pitch hits the inside corner, so the count's on one. So here comes the 0-1 from Surrey. Uh, 0-1 is hit two third on a hop, a true hop, and throwing to first in time is the Jager. So back to back, one, two, three innings, the first ones of the game. See if Diamond can get the offense rolling in the bottom half of the fifth here on the KNEO Sports Network. A proud supporter of local high school athletics is Numac Electric. Serving Newton and McDonald County, they provide power for area homes and businesses and want to wish all the athletes much success throughout the season. For online bill pay and account information, the website is newmac.com or 417-451-1515. Newmac Electric, proudly serving Newton and McDonald County, where their slogan is, your touchstone energy partner. Web Chiropractic at 101 South Washington in Diamond, Missouri is proud to support the Diamond Wildcats, offering a variety of chiropractic services as well as DOT physicals, laser therapy, and more. For a complete listing of the services they offer, the website is webchiro.com. Web Chiropractic at 101 South Washington Street in Diamond, 417-325-6334 or facebook.com slash webchiropracticpc. Go Wildcats! Are looking for umpires. 5-6-7 due up for Diamond here in the fifth ball. DeJager and Roselle are the three due up. All three have reached base at least one time. As Diamond down 3-2 here in the bottom of the fifth. This middle of the lineup's got to get them going. Off for I mean, 12. they've done everything they needed to, Ben. I mean, bases loaded, bases loaded, bases loaded. We just can't get any runs in. Only two. Yeah, Diamond has stranded eight base runners yeah, through gonna, the first three innings. They're going to have to break it loose. So here comes the first pitch to ball. And that's outside, so the count's 1-0. and 0. Ball 0 for 1. She popped out to shortstop in the third. She has also walked. At this point, I think through four innings, every Diamond player has reached base at least once. The 1-0 pitch is hit to the left side underneath the glove of the shortstop Jones. I think you have to give a single yeah. in that one anyways. That was going to be a tough play for the shortstop Jones, and Diamond gets the leadoff runner on. As this is what they're needing here. The Jager comes to the plate. She's 0 for 2. She reached on a fielder's choice in the first. Need to find some way to hit it down the right field line. Yeah, there's a lot of room down that right field side. They're shading DeJager heavily towards that third base side as she's trying to bunt, and it's bunted foul. So the count's 0-1. 
Northwest Arkansas Naturals are at home at Arvest Ballpark Tuesday, May 21st through Sunday, May 26th versus the Amarillo Side Poodles. For ticket information, nwanaturals.com. Proud supporter of high school softball on KNEO. 0-1 the count on to Jager. I would think a bunt is coming again. Might be. They're looking for it. Willow Springs is all up. Slow one pitch is hit in the air to right center field. That's down. And deep. And going to third will be ball. She hesitated. Runners will be at second and third as they were anticipating the bunt. The Jager said no thank you and hits a double. <laughs> and Diamond has runners in scoring position for the bottom of the lineup. And Sarah Roselle. Talon Daniels and Cabri Parmley, all who singled their last at bats. And they are playing they, way left. The center fielder was way le- out left of the second base bag. I mean, pull it to ask him to pull or playing him to pull. And she hit it right there in the right spot. Yeah, ball hesitated. De Jager was about halfway to second by the time ball got to second base. Well, I think she's just making sure it was down. That pitch is oh, hit in the hammered. air to left field. Left fielder over the left fielder's head. One run will come in and score. They're going to send a go-ahead run to the plate. A two-RBI double for Sarah Roselle, and Diamond takes the lead back at 4-3. to three. And still no one out, Ben. 4-3, to three. They, they got some runners going in. Coach Will Springs coming in to talk to him. And some Probably s- trying to settle things down just a little bit. And sometimes, Daryl, that third time through the lineup. Yeah. And we've talked about it over and over. And this Diamond team does not worry is probably the best thing as we have a pitching change here for Willow Springs as number 16 will come in and pitch. Number 16, I think the 18, excuse me, that's 18, Kyla Smith. I thought that was 16. 18, Kyla Smith will come in and pitch. She moves from second base. So Spence went four-plus innings, and she is responsible for the runner at second as well. She came, yeah, Spence went to second base. So that's just a straight switch there because Smith came into second, and if that's where Spence went, that's a straight switch. Yeah. Role models are more important than ever in today's society. You can serve as a role model for others the next Next time you display good sportsmanship, the high school athletic event, good sports are winners and are also vital to preserving our fine sports traditions. So the next time you attend a sporting event, remember to be a good sport. Help rekindle the spirit of citizenship. Message brought to you by your friends at the Missouri State High School Activities Association and KNEO Radio. So finally, Diamond has been able to take advantage of some base running as... Talon Daniels will come to the plate. Got some good hits. I think three in a row. Yes, single, double, double. Let's see if we can't get to the top. Let's see if he's eight, nine hitter. Don't be surprised if Daniels tries to bunt. And she's going to swing away as that one's popped foul. And so the count's 0-1. And yeah, she took a good cut at it, and it was a good ball to hit. She just just underneath it a little. So 0 and 1 the count here on Daniels. Yes, here comes the 0 1 from Smith. That is inside, so the count. Now one ball and one strike will try and get you the majority of the line for uh, Spence here in a minute. She is responsible for the runner at second base. That pitch is grounded foul. So the count now one and two. She gave up, Emma Mm -hmm. Spence gave up 10 hits and four plus innings. She's given up four runs so far. She is responsible for the runner at second base. One and two the count here on Daniels. That pitch is inside and the count now two and two. So this has become a bullpen game for both teams. Surrey came in in the Second inning, third inning for Diamond and settled things down. It's the 2-2 is hit in the air and down for a single. Runners will be at first and third. As Diamond all of a sudden has got things rolling, that's four base hits to start the inning. 
Four base hits, second, first, and third. Still no one out. It's Parmley's two for two. She's got an RBI. Mm -hmm. She'll have another one, too. She gets a hit. Long fly ball, something. She might have two or three, depending on what happens. Yeah, Diamond feeling maybe this is her spot right here. Get things going, get some runs back. <laughs> As the runner is safe. As the runner went to second. I think she's trying to get in a rundown. Down. That's the reason she just stopped out there. And now the coach going to talk to the umpire. Because I think she was, like you said, trying to get in a rundown. <laughs> Called Daniel safe at second. Willow Springs coach talking to the first base umpire, but I mean, the third base umpire is all the way over there. There's no way you can have a conference and have anybody else call her out, I would think. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, she's standing there 10 feet away. I mean, they're all going to conference together. I mean, a home plate umpire is far away. He probably has a better view than the third base umpire, um, potentially down the line. <laughs> yeah, I don't see how you can change that call, but stranger things have happened, Ben. <coughs> I don't think the other umpires want to overrule another umpire. And she is yeah. safe. So runners will be at second and third. 1-0 the count here on Parmley. My head was down after seeing the ball, so I didn't see what was happening. I just heard a bunch of yelling. <laughs> well, she took off and stopped, and I think she was just trying to get a run down. Then she went over to second, and they threw it there. I mean, it was a close play. I think she was safe. I don't know why she didn't slide. If she slid, she'd been safe. No couple. Parmley's two for two, a single and a double, and she's got a 1-0 count. Not bad when your number nine hitter is two for two. Yep, she can start us off. 1-0 is fouled. So the count's one and one. Spence, four plus innings, 10 hits, four runs, four earned, two base on balls, four strikeouts. But her line is not potentially done. The runner at third, Roselle, would be her responsibility. It's a one one pitch, a safety squeeze, and the runner is safe at first. And now you got runners caught everywhere. And. Go, go. Not sure. <laughs> you got runners everywhere on the bases, and everybody is going to end up safe. Nobody scored. No, they didn't score on the throw? Nobody scored. Oh, my. But everybody is safe. As that was a the great runner bond. at third, Roselle, did not go. The runner at second, Daniels, went to third. They had the runners down. Then all of a sudden, Parmley went towards second. And so... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it other than everybody got back safe. It looked like, like a mass chaos for a second. I thought Roselle's going to score. Yeah. On the throw over, she looked her back and then went ahead and threw it. But uh, uh, The bases are loaded for the top of the order in Grace Frazier, who's one for three. And still no one out. Bases loaded again. Pitch popped up in the air. Right field, right center field. Center field are going to come in. And grab it, nice throw, but in safely at the plate. An RBI fly out for Grace Frazier as the sack fly brings in another run. And the runners behind Roselle did the smart thing and tagged up as well. Tagged up and rotated on the throw to home. So runners at second and third. That will complete the line on Emma Spence, who... Gave up five runs. All five were earned. This taking a strike is Surrey, so the count is 0-1. Surrey, one for two. She's also walked. This is the top of the order. This is the big dogs for Diamond. This is they got to break it up in a little bit. They got the chance right here. So here comes the 0-1. Pitch laced to left center field, and that's going to get down. Two runs will come in and score. It'll be a 2 RBI double for Caitlin Surrey, and all of a sudden, Diamond has opened this thing up here. We're getting the right hits at the right time, putting a lot of pressure on Willow Springs, and like I said, we're getting hits at the right time, Diamond is. 
As a big inning here for the Lady Wildcats, they have scored number eight, five Turner. runs in the inning, still only one out. As Lauren Turner will come to the plate, she's one for three. Four. Another runner in scoring position as Turner hits it through the left side. They're going to send the runner home, a wide throw. And in safely is going to be Caitlin Surrey. So it's a single RBI single for Turner. She takes second on the throw. Another run comes in and scores. And we may be seeing another pitching change here. We'll have to wait and see as Reeder will come to the plate. as we'll see what happens here, but this has been a big inning for Diamond. They have scored six runs here in the inning to take a six and eight to three lead. Yeah, I think the coach is out there just talking to him, trying to calm him down a little bit. It happens, some big rain. He's probably telling him, hey, you, you've got to, you know, let's get some outs, let's get out of the inning, and then, you know, you'll have your chance to get back at him. Diamond School District is proud of the Lady Wildcats and all they've accomplished this season, both on the Diamond and in the classroom. Good luck, ladies, in the Class 2 state playoffs from everyone in the Diamond School District. We're with you every step of the way. This one has been bubbling at the surface for about three innings because they loaded the bases in the first, second, and third mm -hmm. and only got only two runs two, yeah. across. This is the ninth batter of the inning. It's Talon Reeder, who's 0 for 1. As she takes the strikes, the count's 0 and 1. Smith has gotten one out in the inning. There's still a runner in scoring position for Diamond. It's the 0 1 pitch is outside. So it counts one ball and one strike. <clears throat> one out here, and there's been a lot of hits in the inning for Diamond. They're just finding the right spot. That 1 1 pitch is laced through the left side. They're going to send the runner home, and the runner hesitates. And it will be an RBI single for Tal Talon Reuter. And Diamond has batted around here in the fifth. It's not that they're pitching bad. It's not, you know, Smith out there. It's just now batting. Number 12, Diamond's Aubrey hitting, finding the holes. Earlier, they found everywhere that Willow Spring was at. So now they're hitting it where they're not. This is their 10th batter in the inning. Eight of them have singled or double reached base on a hit. And the one out was a sack fly. Sack fly, yeah. You really can't count that against it. That pitch is high for a ball. So counts 1-0. and oh. Right now, Willow's just trying to find a way to get into the dugout. Just trying to find an out. they got to find a couple outs here. So here comes the 1-0. Oh. That pitch is popped foul out of play. And the count's one ball and one strike. I don't know where it went, but the crowd was ooing on. <clears throat> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, up back behind us in the stands. One and one to count here on Ball, who is one for two. She singled to start off the fifth. One and one is in there for a strike, and the count now one and two. Keep up on the latest broadcast ball game schedule. Be sure to like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash KNEO Radio. Follow us on X, KNEO 917 Sports. So here comes the one, two. That's low. Trying to see if she would offer at it. And Ball did not. So the count now two and two. Two and two the count. One out here in the inning. Here comes the two two. And that's swung on and missed for strike three. Out number two. As Marissa DeJager comes to the plate. She doubled earlier this inning. She is one for three. She's also hitting a fielder's choice and fouled out. But what an inning for the Lady Wildcats. That pitch is low for a ball, so the count's 1-0. Oh. We kind of expected that inning here in the first or second when they loaded the bases up with only one out. But here they finally got some timely hits at the right time. Six runs, eight hits so far. This here comes the 1-0. Oh. That pitch is laced to the left side and down for a single. As going station to station is Reeder. And DeJager... Gets another hit as Roselle comes to the plate. She had a two RBI double, her last plate appearance. 
She's two for three. Roselle has struck out, singled, and doubled. She scored on a sack fly earlier this inning. Here comes the pitch to Roselle. It's outside. It counts 1-0. and Diamond looking for some more runs, and Willow Springs looking for that last out to get out of this inning. Seven run inning so far. Yeah, seven runs, nine hits. So that pitch is outside. So the count's two and zero. Oh. This has been an extraordinary inning for the Wildcats. So the two zero oh is outside, and the count now three and zero. Oh. I have a chance to load the bases here for Daniels, who's two for three. So here comes the 3-0. Swinging away, and the count's three and one. Yeah. 3-0, swung on and missed. So the count now three and one. As she was thinking home run. Oh, yeah, she took a cut. That pitch is high for ball four. So the bases are loaded now for Daniels. That's only Smith's maybe first, second walk. First walk. First walk that she's been there. Yeah. She's, she came in in this inning. If Daniels could find a way to get a hold of one, that would end the game in five innings. Mm. That pitch is in there. Nope, that's low just, for just a ball. It's on the outside edge. Yeah, so catcher set up outside. Out. This has been a long inning for Diamond. Long inning for Willis Springs. Yeah, it's the 1 0 is high, and the count's 2 0. Parmley's on deck. She's 3 for 3. I don't know that you want to get to her. So here comes the 2 0. Popped foul out of play. It's the count now 2 and 1. You thought to yourself, it only might be a matter of time, and that's what happened here in the fifth. Yeah. Two and one the count here on Daniels. Two one pitch, hit to third. It's a fair ball. She's going to throw home, and they drop it. Tagging the bag is Reader. I'm not, I'm not sure I'm not she, she did, touched did. home. I don't think she did either. I'm surprised. Uh, they don't say nothing. She has, the run has to count. So she comes in and scores. Umpire's on, waiting, but he, he's taking his time. But on no. the on the E five. Now betting number thirteen. I don't think anybody seven. noticed, but I'm not sure she touched the base. Yeah, I don't think she did either. I agree with you. You saw what I saw. She could have tagged third and ended the inning as well. Yeah. As Parmley comes to the plate, she is three for three. The game ending run is at first base. Pitch is fouled back towards us. <laughs> Counts on and one. We got the cameraman next to us jumping a little bit. <laughs> I was right at him. I thought he had it. <laughs> it's okay. We do that all the time, too. 0 and 1 the count. We, we, won't, on we, we won't give you an error on the play. So here comes the 0 1. That's over the outside. Nope, no, that's, that's outside. Not. Counts catcher's 1 sitting, and 1. Yeah, catcher sitting way up outside. Eight runs in the inning here for Diamond, and I think they have nine hits. <clears throat> so one one pitch is spoiled foul, and the count one and two. Looking for a strike. So this is the for. 14th batter of the inning. Yeah, it's just been a long one for Willow Springs, and and the inning before was three up, three down, I believe. You're correct. So here comes the one two to Parmley. And it's outside, trying to see if she would swing. The count's two and two. <clears throat> two balls, two strikes, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. So here comes the two-two. That is low. Counts full at three and two. Yeah, so the catcher is sitting way up outside. I really don't know why, but maybe they wanted it outside part of the plate. And missed. It looked like it, it went over the plate, so it looked like maybe the only thing it could be would be low. 
3-2 is through the right side. One run will come in and score. Two runs will come in and score. And it is now 12-3. And the game-ending run is at second base. And two more RBIs for Parmley, who is a perfect 4-for-4 four four on the afternoon. She's having a day. And the merry-go-round continues for Diamond as Grace Frazier will come back to the plate. She got the first out of the inning. It was a sack fly. Now batting number 10, Grace Frazier. One base hit. I don't think Coach will hold her at third base either. Just a base hit away from ending this game. Ten runs, ten hits in the inning. So here comes the first pitch to Frazier. That's hit down the right field line. Foul. Count 0 and 1. The Diamond School District is proud of the Lady Wildcats and all they've accomplished this season, both on the Diamond and in the classroom. Good luck, ladies, in the Class 2 state playoffs from everyone in the Diamond School District. We're with you every step of the way. I believe this is the 15th or 16th batter of the inning. It's just a, a nightmare for, for Willow Springs inning. Owen won the count here on Frazier. As they're yeah, shading set, her. Yeah, setting up on the outside so. part of the plate. Owen won the count here on Frazier. That's high, so the count's one and one. Daniels at second. Her run is the only run that matters. Parmley's at first, but she doesn't matter. So here comes the 1-1, one, one, and that's in there for a strike. And the count is 1-2. and two. Willow Springs just now trying to find a way to get this to the sixth inning. Yeah. Because you never it. know what happens in your half. i got to get an out. So here comes the 1-2. Popped oh, up in the air. Up. The first baseman and the pitcher <laughs> fight for it, and the pitcher grabs it for the final out of the inning. Four diamond. They explode. For 10 runs in the inning on 10 base hits, there was one error, and they strand two. Five done here in Springfield. This one is flipped. Diamond up 12-3 here on the KNEO Sports Network. Crowder College, your future, our focus. At Crowder College, we have six convenient locations in southwest Missouri and online programs to fit your needs. Flexible scheduling provides a pathway to a career or the opportunity to transfer to a four-year university in a variety of programs. Cheer for the Rough Riders at athletic events. Use the Missouri A-plus scholarship program for free tuition and common fees. At Crowder College, your future is our our focus. Apply today at Crowder.edu. A nonprofit organization, a sponsor of KNEO. Pump and Pantry at the intersection of Missouri 45 and Highway 59 is a proud supporter of Diamond Lady Wildcats. They're open till 11 p.m. seven days a week. They're a convenience store with a large number of breakfast options and made from scratch cheesecakes. For more information, the number is 417-358-1955. Pump and Pantry for all your convenience needs and go cats! Six, seven, eight, due up for Willow Springs here in the six. Emma Spence, Kaylee Pendergrass, and Sophia Jackson working against Caitlin Surrey. And Surrey has settled things nicely for Diamond. She has put up zeros since she's come in, and Diamond finally exploded on the offensive side. Yeah, they just hit it everywhere that Willow Springs wasn't. It wasn't that the pitchers were pitching bad. It just they got a lot of base hits right where they weren't. And uh, it was just a, a nightmare of an inning for Willow Springs. And uh, so they got a chance to answer here, maybe the top of the sixth, maybe the top of the seventh. We make it that far, but uh, they, they didn't make it this way. They didn't make it this far because they're a bad team or anything. They can do the same thing. And Diamond sent 15 batters to the plate there in the bottom of the fifth. Spence does not have an official at bat. First pitch. Is inside for a ball. She counts 1-0. and oh. She has walked and been hit by a pitch. If Diamond can hold on for six more outs, we will have the state championship game as that pitch is low. She counts 2-0. and oh. Have that state championship game tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. 
And now, sir, you out there on the mound for Diamond, you do not. You want to make them have to do it. Make them have to hit the ball to win. The two always inside, and the count's three and out. Yeah. Not sure who the winner of this one will face. Kenneth and Lone Jack were playing on the other field. Have not. We haven't heard. Have I haven't we? heard a score at all. So the three zero pitch is in there for a strike. So the count's three and one. Yeah, Will Springs trying to get base runners any way they can get on. Three and one, the count. Here comes the three one, and that's low for ball four. And if you're diamond, you don't want that to happen. No, it's like make them have to get there. I mean, even though they had Diamond had a big inning, the, the pitcher of Smith from Willow Springs made him. And you got a big lead like this, you don't want to give them anything. No walks, no errors, just play solid softball, make them have to do something. So here comes the first pitch, and that's popped foul as Pendergrass, one for two. She has singled, and then she lined out. She was part of a double play, but it wasn't her fault. She hit the ball hard. Owen won the count here on Pendergrass. It's that pitch is nubbed foul. So the count, nothing and two. Yeah, this is what you want from Surrey. Throw strikes, make them have to do something. Owen to the count here on Pendergrass. Let the defense behind you. They may make an error or two, but let the defense behind you play. This here comes the 0-2. That's low. Good block by Frazier. Count one and two. And like you said, with... A nine-run lead in the sixth inning. You're just wanting to throw strikes. Don't hit by pitch. Don't walk them. Yeah, don't no hit by pitch. No walk. Make them have to do something. Let the players behind you make the plays. So here comes the one-two. That's outside. Counts two and two. Have to think at some point, coaches will come out here for Diamond if Pendergrass gets on because this is – Six, seven, and eight do up. You don't want to get it to the top of the order with runners on as that pitch is outside and Pendergrass has worked it full at three and two. Now you know me. I've never been a fan of throwing off. O oh, two, mm-hmm. and you try to throw it close and you throw it off. And you never know. Two pitches come back to haunt you. So here comes the full count pitch to Pendergrass. Swung on and go. missed for strike three. One out here. And Sophia Jackson will come to the plate. She struck out in the fourth. She's also been hit by a pitch. Now batting number 25, Sophie Jackson. So she will be coming to the plate. As we're at the top of the 1 o'clock hour, you're listening to KNEO 91.7 FM, New York Joplin, live online at KNEO.org. That pitch was high by Surrey. And Frazier blocked it enough that the runner, Spence, wasn't able to get a good enough read at first base. Um, yeah, I'm not for sure. She she thought knew that uh, actually Frazier had dropped it and missed it. Want to know the count here on Jackson. So here comes the 1-0. That's high. The count's 2-0. You're facing the number eight, number nine hitters. You just got to go right after them. Try and... Leave the top of the order yeah. for the seventh. No, they're, I mean, Will Springs a good team. They're going to hit it, but let the players behind you make the plays. So here comes the 2-0 to Jackson, and that pitch is nubbed. Surrey makes the play. She slipped a little bit, but still able to get the pitcher a 1-3 put out. Fielder's choice allows Spence to go to second, mm-hmm. and we'll see if Bay is batting. Madison Bay is back no, batting number nine. Yeah. for... Oh, it's actually Cochran again. Excuse me. So they basically got rid of their DH because Bay struck out her lone plate appearance, and now Cochran has struck out her first plate appearance. She struck out looking last time. Yes. If I remember right. You are correct. So here comes the first pitch to her, swinging and missing. So the count's 0-1. If you're diamond, if you can leave this at 12-3 into the bottom of the six, you have 2-3 and 4 and you would just need one run to end yeah. it in six instead of seven. So that pitch is low, so the count's one and one. Air has kind of been deflated from Willow Springs a little bit. 
after that last big inning. That was tough. But the fans are still behind him over here. I like that. The so one one is high. And the count two and one. Runner at second. This is the number nine hitter for Willow Springs. You don't want to get back to the top of the water. Chloe Jones has reached base twice. Don't want to let Willow Springs start a rally. So here comes the two one. Yeah. Swung on and missed, and the count now at two and two. There you go. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The scoreboard went out on us again. It's out again, is it? Well, it's two and two. Two and two, the count. Two outs. Comes the two two. That's low and outside, and the count's full at three and two. Full count here. On Cochran. She had a full count her last time as well. Yep. She watched it. So here comes the full count pitch. That one is popped foul out of play. And so Cochran will stay alive. Three and two the count again here on Cochran. So here comes another full count pitch. From Caitlin Surrey, who has pitched well in relief. Swung on and missed for strike three. And that will end the inning. Four diamond, no runs, no hits, no errors. They strand one. Head to the bottom of the sixth. Diamond up 12-3 here on the KNO Sports Network. Crowder College, your future, our focus. At Crowder College, we have six convenient locations in southwest Missouri and online programs to fit your needs. Flexible scheduling provides a pathway to a career or the opportunity to transfer to a four-year university in a variety of programs. Cheer for the Rough Riders at athletic events. Use the Missouri A-plus scholarship program for free tuition and common fees. At Crowder College, your future is our focus. Apply today at crowder.edu. Hey, Nonprofit organization, a sponsor of KNEO. If you've ever watched any of the talent shows on television, you see people doing almost anything for attention. What are you doing to get noticed? Whose attention are you seeking? Will that really fulfill you? There is one person that changes all of that, and it's Jesus. He loves you and has a hope and purpose for your life. If you want to learn to have a personal relationship with Jesus, then call or text us at 888-NEED-HIM or chat with us online at chataboutjesus.com. Emma Spence will come back in here to pitch the six as Surrey, Turner, and Reeder will face her as Diamond needs one run to end this game in six innings. Yeah, looking here just at the statistics, Willow Springs only has two pitchers. So and one of them still got a pitch. Spence Smith, yeah. yeah. still got a pitch. Here in the sixth. Yeah. Spence if, actually had the one, two, three inning against Diamond in the fourth. Yes. So. yes Diamond School District is proud of the Lady Wildcats and all they've accomplished this season, both on the Diamond and in the classroom. Good luck, ladies, in the Class 2 state playoffs from everyone in the Diamond School District. We're with you every step of the way. So this has been a long game. Lots of base runners. Diamond has stranded 10, but they scored 10 runs in the fifth. Willow Springs stranded six. Yeah. Well, most of them came, you know, the the 10 runs came in three innings. Bases loaded, bases loaded, and then second, third. Yeah, first, second, third, eight of those 10 stranded base runners are in the first three innings. Yeah. Surrey is in line for the win. Four and two-thirds innings for her. She potentially would pitch the seventh if you get that far. Surrey, two for three. She's also flown out. That ball hit in the air to center field and deep. And that is gone, and that will end the ball game. Caitlin Surrey will walk it off here for Diamond. And you have to make sure that Willow Spring player out there in center field is okay. She crashed hard on the other side of the fence. So you got to make sure she is okay as that ball was hit hard. And getting a bunch of players out there to run out there. You have the trainer running out there as well. So you have to make sure she is okay. 
Yeah, she, yeah, she, she went hard. She was going at it as, as hard and just caught the fence. The fence is not very tall, about waist high, maybe a little bit more than waist high, and flexible. And she just went right over the top of it and landed on her head. I'm hoping, you know, everything's okay out there and she's not hurt too bad. As she made a great effort just trying to get to it because she didn't know. There's no warning track. She right. didn't know. She didn't they, know how close she yeah, was. She did not she, clue. She kind of tumbled head over heels. They're trying to save the game because at that sure. point, you know, you're trying to absolutely to save it for the end of the game. So just waiting to see if she's okay. But that will conclude the game. We will go ahead and take a two-minute timeout, come back with a quick post-game show sponsored by Crowder College after this quick break on the KNEO Sports Network. Web Chiropractic at 101 South Washington in Diamond, Missouri is proud to support the Diamond Wildcats, offering a variety of chiropractic services as well as DOT physicals, laser therapy, and more. For a complete listing of the services they offer, the website is webchiro.com. Web Chiropractic at 101 South Washington Street in Diamond, 417-325-6334 or facebook.com slash webchiropracticpc. Go Wildcats! Tally Tire is excited to support local area high school sports and cheers on all the dedicated school athletes in their endeavors. Located at the junction of Highway 59 and 86 east of Neosho, they specialize in a variety of automotive services including alignments, oil changes, engine diagnostics, and more. For more information, the phone number for Tally Tire is 417-451-0457 or online at tallytire.com. Serving the area since 1997 is First Community Bank. With two Neosho locations, 111 East Main Street and 3005 Gardner Edgewood Drive, they offer a variety of banking services for individuals, families, and businesses and have online banking options 24-7 at firstcommunity.net. For more information, their customer service number is 1-888-780-8391. First Community Bank, where their slogan is, where community comes first. Member FDIC. A proud supporter of local high school athletics is GTC Broadband. They would like to wish all the area teams much success both in the classroom and during their athletic competitions. GTC Broadband is located at 126 South Beaver Avenue in Granby, Missouri and serve customers in the Granby and Diamond area. They offer internet and telephone service to both homes and businesses. To learn more, their website is www.gtcbroadband.net or by phone at 417-472-6211. And we welcome you back to the post-game show. Post-game show sponsored by Crowder College. Diamond improves to 37-1 and on the year. Willow Springs falls to 24-7. and They will play in the third-place game in about 51 minutes. Hopefully the center fielder out there for Willow Springs is okay. Yeah. Uh, she came off on her own power. Diamond will advance to the Class 2 state championship game against either Kennedy or Lone Jack. I don't know who won that game, but they will play tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, for the state championship. Yeah, and we will be there, Ben, have all the action for you. A, a great day. Finally, the first three innings, you just knew Diamond was going to break it open, but they never did, and a good job by Willow Springs keeping him there. That one inning just did Willow Springs in. Diamond scored 10 runs in that one inning. But the walk-off home run, uh, she had, I thought Alicia Shanks out there in center field didn't even care where the – she didn't care where the fence was. She was going after the ball as hard as she could. Just tumbled right over the top of it. It's a great effort from her. And great and and which she, it's a good thing to see her get up because she flipped over there and landed right on her head. And it was a good thing to see her get up. What I really like, Ben, is when they come around, uh, you know, they celebrated the home plate, you know, Diamond did, and then looked out there and said, There's someone hurt instantly. What they do, they took a neat little respect for the other team. And, uh, and they, like I said, Diamond did a great job, and you can't take anything away from Willow Springs. They've had a great year. Go play for third here in uh, about an hour. Yeah, Diamond scored 10 runs in the fifth, 10 hits. Uh, they stranded 10 base runners in the game, but most of those were in yeah, the first them. three innings. 15 batters went to the plate for Diamond. There in the fifth inning, Caitlin Surrey, a walk-off home run, three RBIs for her. Gabri Parmley, not bad for a, f- a ninth-place hitter. She finished four for four on the afternoon. Diamond improves to 37-1 and one on the season. We will come back tomorrow morning 
between 10.30 and 10.45 for the pregame show of the Class 2 state championship between Diamond and the winner of Kennett and Lone Jack. For our studio producer, Luke Taylor, for Coach Daryl Harbaugh, I'm Ben Wolcott saying so long. Here from Springfield, Diamond 13-3 winners. We now join a Disciples View here on KNEO. This has been a live production of KNEO Sports. This broadcast may not be reproduced or retransmitted without the express written consent of the KNEO Sports Network. This has been a sporting outreach of the KNEO Sports Network, reaching into communities to make a difference for eternity.